Alrighty, how's everybody doing today? Today we're gonna make a video to kind of give some clarity for some players that may have already played but still have questions and we're gonna give information for players that are just starting that still are a little confused as to how the movements and how the game completely works. So, we're gonna kick it off by doing a little casual match. And I've sent him a friend invite and I am gonna select my Razor Cord deck. Uh, friend invites allow you to play with no time limit, so you know, make friends, invite them, and you can play at your pace. So the first thing you're going to do is select two cards, or up to two cards rather, that you may want to replace in your hand for your strategy. Uh, in this particular case, I have a legendary and two epics. I'm not going to exchange any cards, so I'm going to confirm. Uh, there is a timer on this and a timer on this next part. So we're going to flip two cards to see who gets to decide who to go first. And I won, so I'm going to check out the board and decide uh, if it's in my best interest to go first. Um, so, looking at the board, you have different types of cards that influence other cards. You are going to select one of these cards to start your moves each turn for eight rounds. Okay. Each card has different symbols on it. The first, you see this plus one blue and minus two purple. That means that this card influences blue cards towards you and it influences purple cards away from you. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select me to go first, and I'm gonna just go ahead and take this. And the reason is it has this faction icon. The faction icon is what you need to look for because this is what determines if you can play one of your faction cards. That is my only option. I will have to though send him this for one, two positions. Now, the faction icon must be on your starting card always. It cannot be on a card that you moved. All right, so we're going to look at different types of cards. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and play this Grim Order. Grim Order, it's a legendary card. You can play it at any time. This is going to show you how value changes work. So he's going to draw two cards and place them in the Loyalist row. You can drag and just drop that faction anywhere unless it's a lasting effect. So I have a 21-point and a 10 point card because it's going to double the second one and it randomly chooses one of those two to double not the one I really want. So then it's the opponent's turn and while he's searching for his moves we're going to talk a little bit about the influencing of the draw card. So he moved the three and as you see you have these two two icons on the screen. Those two icons represent the community icon. That added two additional cards and an end of turn card. So at the end of any turn you're going to add a card to the board. Uh, so I'm, I'm up. I've got a couple interesting faction cards. Uh, but let's go with... Let's see, this sends a gray back. It's not very good. So I'm going to go ahead and just take this. I'm going to give him the four. Now you see it's one, two, three, and there's a negative four. Well, there's no more oranges. So it doesn't matter if you complete that move. Uh, had there been another orange, I'd have to move it back one more. All right, so I'm up. I've got a lot of good options here. I'm going to go ahead and play the Crafty Butcher. Now this card, if you look what it says, draw two cards from opponent's faction deck and play one instantly. So it's going to allow me to actually see two new cards from the opponent's deck. So we'll play him. We'll see what happens there. And we've got a... Okay, interesting. So we have a Black Mirror and Elemental Life. This gives me the opportunity to show you what a lasting effect is. So I'm going to select this Black Mirror card. So what this is, you see the arrows at the bottom, a lasting effect is played on any row you'd like to play it on. That particular card, though, is only valuable on the opponent's row. If you play it on your row, you're sending cards to your opponent, which is not what you want to do. So Black Mirror, clearly I want to play it on either the Recruits or Loyalist. I will choose his Recruit row. The blue card represents uh, any blue card that enters that row will automatically go to my Recruit row. And that's how lasting effects are played. So he's taking the negative three, which moves multiple cards towards towards him. It's a very powerful card, those negatives. Uh, he's also avoiding the black mirror row. And as you can see, the lower the card value, the higher the positive movements associated with it. So they were able to move a five and a seven and a six over two spaces. Right. As you see, these twos actually do a lot of movement. In the right circumstance, they can be super powerful. So let's go ahead and look at 
uh, another card that is interesting, and I'll play this first. So I'm going to move this nine. You, one thing we didn't mention is you see it says loyalists, and then there's a silver kind of bar at the top. Well, that represents the starting position as loyalist. If I chose this card, it says recruits, and the starting position would be in recruits. There are no allies, but if there was one like the first one I took, it starts in allies. So we'll go ahead and take this. I'll just bank that. And banking means if you put it in allies, uh, they can never be attacked. They can't be moved. They are your points guaranteed. Um, and so now I get to choose again. Now I want to show you this card. So Doppelganger is an interesting card because this is one of the rare cards that actually pulls cards from anywhere on the board, in the deck, or even in the afterlife. And so as you see, he moved this five over. So Doppelganger pulls all three of these inside traders to my allies. So right now, that's actually more valuable because that five would come over here. That's like a 10-point swing. So it becomes a 20-point card. So if I play that, you'll see it's going to automatically give me the chance to take that five. And then it's going to automatically bring it directly out of the community deck and into my ally row. So that was a, a, a lot more powerful play than maybe it normally would be. So he's looking again at different options. And he's going to go with a move option. Or, no, he didn't. He went with a faction option. So he's going to move me the five to draw more cards out, move the six. So he's going to get to play a card now. What are you playing? So it looks like they're going to go with Ascended Master. Ascended Master is going to draw a card, automatically decide if it's even or odd. And if it's odd, he gets to move one card plus two. And if it's even, two cards plus one. So he took the eight, and I, the end of turn card was a nice one for me. I will go ahead and move that. Um, now, I have my choice. You see all the purples are highlighted. I can move any purple I want minus one. So I'm going to just give him the four rather than giving him more points. In this case, a black minus two. Obviously, the two is the better option. I'll go ahead and pull that back. All right, it's another lasting effect, Blade Storm. So in this case, Bladestorm is going to kill a card on the opposite side of the board. So I'm going to actually try and, and put these together and combine these. So I have a green that will kill one in his recruits and a blue that will send a, a, blue, or a, card, a blue card back to me. So he's going to play, and basically by the looks of it, he's going to go with the one because he can take my, the 21 all the way to the other side. Hmm... And that's a giant point swing right there. It is. It is a giant point swing. So now I have to decide what the best move is. So looking at the board, I'd say it's still going to be this. I could take that 21 points out, but I don't want to. We'll leave it there for a minute. So I'm going to take uh, the Entrepreneur. He sends a lot of purple cards, but look, there's two of these. And I can actually just send him four points, basically, to his side. And... I'm actually going to take this four. Ah, uh, no, we'll take the six. We'll leave the factions for this. All right, so now I want to I want to attack that 21. So I'm going to look at what's available to attack that 21. Well, there's nothing I have that can take it right now because every card I have does not do anything to it. But I can start by attacking it little by little. So if this round, I'm going to protect all of my cards, at least with a freeze effect, and I'm going to reduce his card down a little bit. So I'm going to take that 21. I'm going to reduce it by 7 or 8. And then it freezes my card. So he's going to have a hard time moving, but he still want, he still has a nice 13-point card. He'll probably want to continue to uh, move towards taking that card. So he's playing the 4, which is going to have to send the 2 back to the middle. He's doing a gray forward, and he's moving that 13 up. So he's still got it. The blue, though, was affected by the black mirror sends it over to me, but the card is not frozen, um, so it could still be moved. So it looks like they played a little removal card, so now that black mirror is gone, and that's the great thing about those plus five, minus five cards, is they double as a removal card. So you always want to keep a couple of those in your deck. Exactly, and unfortunately, the 12 came out, which would have allowed me to move the six back to that row and keep it. So now, instead of that, I'm going to have to deal with the fact that I'm going to have to give you that black and an eight-point swing just to take that card. 
Okay, so now we will show you another kind of combination card. So Neuro Merge is going to allow me to select two cards on the board uh, and then put them together to create a more powerful card and kill one of them. So watch this. I'm going to take this. I want to make sure that in looking at the middle of the, the board, he can't really pull out uh, my 13, but he can pull out that 11. So instead of... Um, I'm going to go ahead and take that value and that value, and I'm going to add it to this 11 and protect it for a round. So now I have a 35-point card protected, but my 11 gets killed. So now that card becomes very important for me to, to bank, and that's kind of a, a value change mechanic that you can find with Razor Core. Everybody has some level of value change mechanics, but uh, Razor Core is a little heavier because they're a corporation. All right, so he's playing a faction. The Cantor. And she is a swap effect, so you get to see how a swap effect works. So he's drawn two cards. He's going to take the lower of them, I'm sure, and he gets to swap with any card from my side of the board, which keeps the game real close because, as you see, it's only 115 to 108 with a few rounds left. Huh. So, looking at how we're set, I'm a little concerned about my 35, you know, being taken. Um, so I'm actually going to uh, decide against uh, taking it or doing anything with it right now uh, because there's no plus orange movement. But there are some other options for me. Uh, so I'm going to start by moving this. Let's see. You have gray you have a lot of grays this one moves that i'm going to take the seven that's going to allow me to i'll just push back this two i'll push the, the eight and nine back and i'll steal that four right back so now i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to play nocturne it is a move card that's going to allow me to steal a card and that 13 he just took from me is coming right back and it's going to go right back into my allies in this case, you'll see a skip action icon. If I had a negative card, that card actually allows me to send it to their side. I don't, so I'm just going to click skip, skip action. See, there you go. If I had had that negative four, I would have absolutely tried to uh, move it. All right, so we're in round seven. He's playing. And he's going to go ahead and bank that 12, I'm sure. He's going to flip my seven or set, yeah, probably my seven, and he flipped my six. So that, again, keeps the game very close with one play left. So I'm up. I know I've got to do something. That 35 is still out there. I can't do anything with it, really. Um, so I'm going to do some faction clearing. I'm going to take that. I'm going to send this back. I'm going to send that forward. And now there's no factions. Now I got the best play to, to lock in that 35 to make sure I can secure it. Phobia allows me to play on any card on the board and add 18 points to it and lock it for one round. So this card can be good to be played in the middle so you get a, a, a card, a starting card next round. But in this case, I just want to protect this 35, make it a 53 point card, lock it in, and that's going to make it a difficult comeback, especially since he did not receive a faction card. That's going to make it really tough for him. So he's going to play the best possible move he sees, which isn't much considering I was able to clear out the factions, lock in my points, and that's about as good as he could do. And there comes the faction cards that would have helped him. So I've got the win, um, but that gives you a really nice kind of view of the flow. And the games can be played really quickly, as you just saw, uh, but they can also be really intense and really deep and strategic. So try out each faction. Each one presents a new challenge and a new way to play. Uh, every game is always going to be different. And hopefully this helps you kind of see some of the strategies that you can, um, um, you can affect uh, with Razor Court. All righty. So that's going to be it for this video. And uh, we're, we should have some more for you all in the future. But uh, hopefully, like Randy said, that this video has kind of helped you all understand the uh, game a little more. And as you can see, he's kind of going through the faction library right now, or card collection. Uh, so yeah, just check out the app. Tell us how you like it. Um, and like I said, feel free to reach out to us anytime you have questions.